Thank you, Jesus. We were talking about standing fast and the liberty wherewith Christ has set us free. Galatians 5, verse 1. I want to just add a few more remarks to that. There's three things in my spirit today. It's Christ building his church. And the prophet of God given the false prophets time before he moved on and called down the real fire. And standing fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. How these are all going to be linked together is just with the work of the Holy Spirit over a few weeks probably. God willing our brother Philip will be with us next week. So we stand fast in the faith because that's what we have in Jesus Christ. It's a liberty because we're liberated from the flesh, the world, and the devil. We're liberated by the anointing of God that destroys yokes. We're liberated even in the midst of tribulations and trials in these last days. We see things going on all around us, contrary to the Word of God. We thank God for the drops of revival, fire, or rain, whatever you want to call it, around the world. People are still getting saved, healed, and delivered, baptized in the Holy Ghost and fire by the thousands, and in some cases hundreds of thousands. We have inherited a situation spiritually where religious doctrines have hindered the people of God for far too long. We have inherited a situation where the gospel of the kingdom has not been preached. Religious doctrines, antichrist doctrines, so called places of worship, and they're nothing less than antichrist systems. And we are called in these days to carry the fire of God. We are called these days to carry the truth of God. And we need to be praying for each, each and every one of us, praying for others or other people in this assembly, because there's some of us in places where other people don't know who we be. There's many examples of battles being fought. We need to be fighting those battles for every one ministry in this assembly. We're getting pressure from all sorts of places where you wouldn't expect it to be. But as we stand for the gospel of the kingdom, that's what this church was planted for, and that's what this church will continue to stand for. Many people have come and many have gone. They've tried to change the doctrine of this church. But the doctrine of this church will not be changed because we have been raised up for this day. And we think of the prophet whenever three and a half years without rain. 
that one prophet that the Bible concentrates on in that verse of that scripture, we see how he done a journey. How he went to the brook. He was fed, the brook dried up. A trial of his faith. Have he taken comfort in the answer of God, the provision of God, rather in God, he would have been in trouble. But he didn't put his attention on the brook because the brook dried up. And our attention must continually be on the Lord God himself. He then moved on and he looked after the water woman. He looked after her son. He challenged the king. He challenged other prophets. And then he challenged the false prophets. And he gave them time to call the fire down. But no fire came down. And I believe that the true church of Christ, those that are really born again, walking with God, have given the religious people, they've given the systems an uptime, and they've been calling down fire, no fire has come. But I believe it's time for us to begin to move on. And whenever Elijah moved on and he built that altar, according to the plan of God, he didn't build it according to any other system. He built it according to the instruction of God. And if we're given the religious people and the other setups in our nation today time to see something to call down fire to demonstrate, we need to be building the sacrifice according to the Word of God. We need to be preparing a people for that rapture's roar of praise. We need to be preparing a people to turn back to the gospel of the kingdom. Because Jesus said, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached on all the earth, and then the end shall come. Different people have quoted that scripture to me. And when I challenged them about what the gospel of the kingdom was, they didn't know. But we know. The gospel of the kingdom is the same message that Jesus Christ preached. He said, go into the cities and heal because the kingdom of God has come. Tell the people the kingdom of God has come. And we have got that message from the throne of God today. And as we prepare, the time is running out for the ungodly and all that they have tried to do. The new world order has had plenty of time. And they've tried to disrupt the economy of the world. They've tried to disrupt everything and bring the world into ill health, poverty, famine, and everything else. Those people that we read about and there's thousands crossing other countries and crossing the channel and dinghies and all sorts of things putting themselves in danger, they're not just doing that because they want to do it. That is the plan of the one world government. They want to bring overpopulation to one part of the world, underpopulation in another part of the world, and bring about a famine, which they cannot bring about because the church is still on earth. Because the Holy Spirit has still got people on the earth that are praying and seeking His face. So we're not concentrating so much on what the devil's doing, we're concentrating on the plan of God for His church. And a few things we just mentioned in passing. Jesus said, I will build my church. There's two statements. I, Jesus Christ, 
will do the building. What's he going to build? He's going to build my church. Two statements there that we can stand on and uh, carry us through every attack of the devil. Jesus is the builder and Jesus is the church. He is the foundation. I know some people try to tell us that Peter was the foundation. Peter's name was mentioned in the Gospels and it's interpreted a stone. But Jesus is the bedrock. He's unmovable and he's unshakable. And as we re keep renewing our mind in the plan of God and in the word of God, the devil's defeated. We refuse to accept anything that Jesus bore on the cross. We refuse to accept it. No matter what statistics may say. No matter what man may say. We can stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. One comfort and thought we can take from the word of God. Nowhere, no place did God ask anybody to do anything that he didn't enable them to do. So when the word of God says here, stand fast, it doesn't say stand fast if you feel like it today. Maybe you're having a bad day, so don't bother standing fast. It's just a command, stand fast, therefore, in the liberty. We have been liberated from religion, liberated from hellish doctrines, and we're standing fast in that liberty because Christ has made us free. And be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. When we stand fast, and the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free, we do not need to be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. It's not necessary and it's possible to stand fast. Assisting the Lord just have a great habit of saying to me when I talk about the Word of God, it's not easy. And I've always had the same answer. The Word of God says it's possible. Amen. That's the one we got to concentrate on. The prophet Jeremiah said, Is there anything too hard for God to do? And the answer is no. There's nothing too hard for you to do. First Thessalonians 5 describes the children of God as children of light. 1 Corinthians 16, 13, 14 tells us that we stand fast in the faith. That's in faith in Christ Jesus. That's not the faith of man or any religion we might have been brought up on. Because in all these religions there's witchcraft. My brother was telling us today he was in certain places where these people go on their a religious name, but it's really witchcraft, and we need to be praying for them. Praying for God's people, for we don't know exactly what their monastery may lead them unto day by day. If we go to 1 Peter chapter 5, One Peter five written from verse five. Likewise ye younger submit yourselves unto the elder, yea all of you be subject one to another, and be clothed with humility, for God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. We need to be humble before God, we need to be humble before each other. But we're never humble before the enemy. Because we have got that authority. The devil operates in authority, uh, devil operates in control. We have no desire for control. 
Our desire is for authority that we have in Christ Jesus. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that ye may exalt you in due time. It would appear that there's many people today that are sort of a witten mold. Witten for the enemy to have his opportunity and fail. But we're humbling ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And he's going to exalt us through his gospel. Because we will be speaking words of life pulling down words of death. And they will, as the word of God is exalted, his servants will be exalted. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. Casting all your care upon him, for he careth for you. The Lord will never weary of us casting our care upon him. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about sick and whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfastly in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, There's no grace in the devil. There's no grace in the world. But the God of all grace who has called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. We are called unto the eternal glory of God. The God of all grace has called us unto eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that you have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. We have been called unto the eternal glory of God by Christ Jesus. We have not been called to be a doormat for the world. We've been called unto the eternal glory of God. God's glory is on his called, his anointed, and his appointed. And if you're born again of the Spirit of God, you've been called of God. And you've been called unto the eternal glory. And again, we keep renewing our mind. Anything that's coming along, that doesn't show up the eternal glory of God, we refuse it. Three nights running, the devil tried to put a, a dizziness in my head, and I said, no! No more conversation about it. We refuse anything that's not the eternal the glory of God. So we're casting all our care upon him, if we go to Psalm 133, I'm sorry, we'll go to Philippians 127 first. Philippians 127, we're talking about unity now. Standing fast, being unified in the presence of God. Philippians 127. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. Only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ and the gospel of the kingdom are the same gospel. We don't get under conversations. Some people blame the work of the devil on God. I never heard of so much things that God has been blamed for in these days. You talk to different people and they tell you, oh, God told me to do this. But it's not on here. 
So if it's not in the Word of God, our conversation has to be in line with the gospel of Christ. Our conversation needs to be life, an everlasting life, abundant life, deliverance, power, and authority. That whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit. We can only stand fast in one spirit when we fully, 100%, engage in the gospel of the kingdom. That is the unity that God wants in his people. That unity is only going to come whenever we see the religious fail to call down fire and the true fire of God comes down and consumes the sacrifice, which is us. We are a reasonable sacrifice, according to the book of Romans. Many people say, oh, I would die for Christ. In this day and hour, it's more important that people would love for Christ. If they love in the gospel, they refuse these other nonsense that's going on. That you stand fast in one spirit with one mind. That's the mind of Christ. We need to take on the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ was to come to do the will of the Father. The mind of Christ in the garden was, Father, not my will, but your will be done. That's a mind that we need to be standing fast on today. Striving together, working together, laboring together for the faith of the gospel. There is one gospel, and it's Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's Jesus Christ, Savior, Healer, Baptizer, and the Holy Ghost on fire, and he's the King, and he's the common King. That is the only gospel anybody else preaching another gospel has not been called by the Holy Spirit. And I know I got into a lot of trouble years ago for that statement, and I still stand over it. If they're not preaching the gospel of the kingdom, they are not called of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will not call those that are not anointed and appointed by God. The Holy Spirit obeys what he hears Jesus and the Father say. That's what he teaches the people. That's what he tells the people. It's nothing of himself but what I hear the Father and the Son say. So that's where we're at today. We're coming close. Whenever we, we're going to call the fire of God down, the religious people are already afraid of the people of God calling down the fire of God. A number of years ago, a man stood there, and I said to him, I'm going to call down the fire of God. And before I could say anything else, he was out the door, out the gate, and I never seen him again. Call down the fire of God is what we're here for to do. Amen. 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 Praise God. So it's done in the unity of spirit, the unity of mind, and the unity of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we go to Psalm 133, something there that's often looked over, can quote it about unity but not really see the fullness of the blessing of unity. Psalm 133, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for the brethren to dwell together in unity. It's a real blessing to be put together with people and know there's not going to be 
a heated discussion or argument, whatever you want to call it, over doctor. So it's a pleasant place to be where there's a unity with the people of God. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard, that went down to the skirts of his garment. That precious anointment is talking about the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It was a type and shadow in the old covenant of the anointing of God. But praise God, we're not living on type and shadows. We got the real deal. And we're not going back to types and shadows. We're going to walk in the real deal. Amen. Praise God. As a Jew of Hebron, as a Jew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life evermore. We need the Lord to command the blessing. Some people think because of the doctrine that we preach that we are bending or God's arm up his back and making him do something. That's a lot of nonsense. Nobody can make God do anything. All we're doing is praising God and taking him at his word. When we ask God to heal somebody, what we really should be asking God is to manifest your healing. Because his healing has already been healed. Now the word of God is full of these scriptures. We might not get to them today. They just every time you read the word of God, they just keep coming up. So the Lord commands a blessing. And that's good if it stopped there, but it goes farther than that. It says even life forevermore. When we release the word of the living God, the Lord's commanding life everlasting into those people that they just reach out and take it, that they just receive it. So when we want to see these people being saved that we're dealing with on a daily basis, we need to hold fast to the unity that God has given us. And God will command the blessing, even life evermore. People coming unto everlasting life. People going on and going through with God. The Gospel of John 12, written from verse 30, 37. And time's gone, we're not going to get into this thing today. But there's so much for the people of God today. John 12, verse 37. But though he had done so many miracles, as talking about Jesus doing miracles, the religious people were having trouble believing the miracles that they could even see with their own eyes. I remember whenever I was having heart trouble back in the early 90s, when God healed me, we could hear the people Say, had he ever got a heart problem? They don't accept the miracles of God. But that doesn't change it. Amen. One of the people that made that statement watched me struggle to walk from the back door to the gate. And yet when God touched me, they said, did he ever have a heart problem? Jesus had the same problem. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he speak, Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? That's talking about Isaiah 51. Now I had planned to look at that today, but we don't have the time. 
Isaiah prophesied, Lord, who hath believed a report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? The arm of the Lord has been revealed to those that believe the report of the prophet. And the prophet Isaiah had a great experience. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. That was the pathway into Isaiah asking this question Lord who has believed a report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed now there's many scriptures that tells us but how the devil has blinded the eyes and the ears of a lot of people's spiritual understanding. But there's one way to get the eyes and ears of our spiritual understanding open and seek the Lord. To wait upon the Lord. To believe the Word of God. To stand on the promises of God. How do we stand on the promises of God? We be convinced of the capability of our God that He is able to fulfill all his promises. You could get a, a dozen promises from somebody that you, you just wouldn't believe because you know them. You know them. Their word, you know that their word's worth nothing. But whenever we come to know our God, we can stand firmly on the promises of God because we know who he is, we know what he is, and we know he'll never fail, he'll never lie, he'll never let us down. Praise, Praise God. Praise so the arm of the Lord has been revealed to those who believe and those who don't believe, therefore they could not believe. Because Elias said again, he has blinded their eyes. Is hardened their heart. That they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted. And I should heal them. Oh dear. Boys are dear. Imagine the Old Testament linking salvation and healing together. Oh, we've got to close some Bible colleges at night. The devil has blinded their eyes and hardened their heart that they should not see with their eyes and understand with their heart and be converted. The plan of God is to be converted and conversion includes physical healing. It includes mental healing. Glory to God. What a mighty God we serve. Praise God. And then it gives us another reason why they wouldn't believe God. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and speak of him. The more we allow the Lord to reveal his glory, the more we will speak of him. The greater things we will believe him for. These things, alas, when he saw his glory, when he saw the Lord high and lifted up, when we see the Lord in all his glory and what he's done for us, when we look back over the years where we could have been killed and according to the laws of average should have been killed, we're still living. So we had this experience with God and that's what God wants us to have. He speak, he saw his glory and speak of him. When we have a revelation of the glory of God, 
when we have a revelation of the fullness of salvation, we will speak of God. We will know God is not a God of yesterday. He's a God of today and He's a God of tomorrow. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He never changes. We speak of the glory of the God that never changes. The God that brought us out of darkness into this marvelous light never changes. The light never goes dim. He never turns us down when we come to seek his face. When we come to wait upon him, he doesn't say you're not going to renew your strength today. You're not going to mount up with wings as eagles today. You're not going to walk and not faint today. The word of God says, They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed in him. You see, we've got people today and they will believe in God, but they've got the fear of man. So they want to just go a wee bit with God. They don't want to get in the wrong side of man because the fear of man, according to Proverbs, the fear of man worketh a snare. And it says here, Nevertheless, among the chief rulers, also many believed on him, but because of the Pharisees, because of the Pharisees, they did not confess him, lest they put him out of the synagogue. Well, praise God, open the door, throw it out. We're going to believe in God. We're going to praise God. We're going to walk with the Lord. They can throw us out of the water, but they can't throw Christ out of us. Amen. They were afraid of man. They were afraid of the Pharisees. Therefore, they didn't confess him. People used to phone me up and not give them their name. <coughs> In case their minister would hear that they were wanting healing. According to their minister's healing was of the devil. What sort of a devil do they serve? The devil, I know, doesn't want to heal people. As usual, wouldn't give her name, just pop a smurf of here. But I went into the spa that night. Here the woman was standing. I walked over and I said, well, didn't God touch your mother today? It was not a good job. Well, she just wished the ground had opened up and swallowed her. People don't have to tell us who we're praying for. When I went into the prayer room that day to pray for that woman, I could see her sitting there. And God raised her up. Well, if I was sitting on there, a papa smurf that doesn't believe the gospel of the kingdom, I wouldn't be too long there. She saw the evidence of the gospel of the kingdom, but feared man, what man may see. Hallelujah. And then another reason apart from being put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of man more than the praise of God. They loved the praise of man more than the praise of God. Everything we do in our walk with Christ, we ignore the praise of man for that amounts to nothing, but we glory in the presence of God. We glory in the praise of Jesus Christ. We praise that we, we glory in the praise that our name is written down in the Lamb Book of Life. When the disciples come back and look ten and said, Lord, even the devils are subject to us. And Jesus said, glory rather that your names are written in the Lamb Book of Life. Thank God demons are subject to us in the name of Jesus. 
Praise God, sickness and disease is subject to us in the name of Jesus. But it's better to glory in the fact that our names are written down in the Lamb Book of Life. Hallelujah. So may the Lord bless each and every one of us. May the Lord help us to walk in his presence, to walk in his plan, to follow the, the gift that he's given us. And anybody that's been watching by internet or any other way today and you're not saved, maybe you have been caught up in snares of religion. Maybe you've been caught up in doctrines of devils. But today you would like to give your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to say a prayer, and if you are sincere about giving your life to the Lord, just repeat that prayer, believing in your heart that the Lord will not turn you away. Lord Jesus Christ, I repent of all my sin. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are the Son of the living God. I know that you have died on Calvary to save me. I know that not only can you save me today, you can love in me. You can baptize me in the Holy Ghost and fire that I will have power to be your witness. So Father God, I'm calling upon you right now. And I believe in my heart that you're saving me right now. If you have prayed that prayer, I want to pray for you in Jesus' name. Father God, I pray for those that have put their trust fully in you today. I pray, Lord, that you will touch them, you will reveal yourself to them. Lord, that this will not just be a fasten phase, but Lord, it will be reality, Lord, that you will reveal yourself to real in their lives. You'll change them, Lord. You'll liberate them. You'll set them free. And Lord, anything that may hinder them today, I bind in the name of Jesus. And I cast it from them. And I pray, Father God, that they will know the fire of God. Baptize them in the Holy Ghost on fire. Lord, that they will be a witness for you wherever they may be. And Lord, bless them lead them, guide them, and direct them. And Father God, find them a Bible-teaching, Bible-believing church, Lord, where they'll be fed the powerful Word of God. And Father, I praise you for this gathering here today. I praise you, Lord, for everyone gathered. And I pray, Lord, for every family and family circle. Pray, Lord, household salvation. Pray healings and deliverance. Lord, we pray for those that are not with us today. Lord, because of some uh, pain or whatever. Lord, I pray, bless them. Touch them. Lord, that they will have their eyes fixed upon you today. And Lord, they'll be liberated and set free. And Lord, we'll be careful to give you all the praise. Give you all the glory. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. And shout it, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God.